Hi everybody, this is Denny with my YouTube channel, Why Is This True? And joining me today from uh, Michigan is Rob Gauthier. And Rob has a website called The ET Whisperer where you can uh, check out his work and what he does. And uh, I just want to thank you, Rob, for joining me today. And I want to let everybody know that our introduction came from uh, Miguel Mendoza, who wrote a book called Being with the Beings, and you were featured in that book. And that's how we made the connection. So thanks for joining me, man. I really appreciate it. I'm grateful. I, I love what you're doing. I, I love the uh, setup that you've got to be able to just sit here and chat with someone about the interesting things. I'm so so happy to be here. Right. Thank you. Cool. All right. So so what's been going on with you lately? Like, well, it, the, the right now in my whole life, this has been one of the weirdest times, really. Um, the last few months before, maybe about three months ago, I just got done with a pretty long, substantial uh, issue in court. Um, my son, he, he's got severe cerebral palsy. Uh, he can't walk, talk, I mean the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So he turned 18. And when you turn 18 and you have that, you have to have custodianship over you for people to take care of your medical stuff. Well, since his mother and I were divorced a few years ago, we split custody with him. And I was told by every person in the world, you know, either one or the other will get him. So we were going to court, putting out information, and that took up like five or six months of my life. And we were, you know, normally we have a lot of our time and energy in sharing the work that we do with the channeling uh, and that's a huge part of our life but for the last six months before court we were just fixated on court and fixated on just doing that so right now we're starting to get revved back up towards our work um, and right now that that's what it's been about it's been about you know my son and court ended and it ended up being the exact same way it was 50 50 split oh. which is crazy yeah <laughs> So uh, that blew my mind, but it's great. Uh, it's it's been great. When he's here, I'm I'm with him, and I do a little bit of work. And when he's not, we're doing a lot of work. So we're trying to get it set up. Um, you know, we've got doing events and channelings, and we're trying to get more free stuff out to people because as much free stuff as we have available for people, it's just it's not the amount of free stuff we want because oh. you know we drive that whole thing for that reason. So. Yeah, and when you say free stuff, what are you referring to exactly? Uh, YouTube, uh, we do a lot of videos there, uh, and the channeling that we do talks about important topics that are relevant and that are uh, necessary to talk about in the moment. Um, like during the campaign, the political things that were happening, we wanted to make sure people knew uh, our own perspective and Treb's perspective, Artif's perspective. So we tried to get out as much of the information as we could because a lot of fear goes around these uh, events that are going on in the earth and we want everyone to know it's okay you know you can relax and breathe no matter what your affiliation is no matter what's going on uh, it's not the end of the world that this election took place and the results right. so we're trying to get that out to people and stuff like that's important we think a lot of just regular information and people's uh, ability to interact with us you know, most channelers have it set up where you have to be at an event or pay for something to do it. And we want people to be able to ask what's bothering them and be able to do it without paying money. So we've been working hard on getting more of that set up too. Okay. Now, when you say we, I know this is covered on your website, but just for the benefit of people that are tuning in, you're talking about Treb, one of the beings that you channel. And then the other one is, um, give us the name again. I'm sorry. I, yeah. Sorry, Ardiff. Yeah. Uh, Ardiff, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. And those are the two primary beings that you communicate with and do the channeling work. But it's not limited to those two. No, actually yeah. at this point there's been about 300 uh, of ET consciousnesses that I've been able to channel. Uh, you know, another part of the we too is my fiance Kalina Angel. Uh, she's been with me for uh, over three years now and she's been a huge part of this work. If it wasn't for her, half the stuff that's out there wouldn't be out there from the last three years. So she's a part of that we too and she puts uh, a lot just as much if not more energy in it than I do to get wow. it out. So. <laughs> wow. And did she do channeling work herself too? Yes, she, she has did. connection with her guides and she's been doing that. Uh, she's she's connected with them her whole life, but she's been honing it in and preparing to share that for the last couple of years. She's already shared a few things at events and stuff, but she's getting herself ready to be more public about it very soon. Has she done any YouTube videos yet? 
Uh, she's done videos where me and her both did videos, like one called Earth Seeds and Star Seeds on her uh, old radio show, The Earth Experience. And that one, she had her channeling uh, and her talking, me talking, and Trev and Artif sharing about the difference between people who've incarnated on Earth uh, tons of times and then those who are new to incarnating from other planetary consciousnesses. And to, to this day, even though that's two years old now, I think, that's probably one of my favorite things that I've done with her where we both shared sharing energy because it was so beautifully done and so particularly interesting in the perspectives. Wow, that's cool. So, And just so people know, that in the description on this video, I'll put the links down there so people could check these things out. Is it, you know, Anything that we're talking about here, I'll make sure that it's in the description so we can so people can re reference that as we go. So the other thing, I, I hope this is not too personal, but um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, are you, how is your communication with your son? Are you able to communicate with him effectively, I mean, to your satisfaction? No, and that's the part that really uh, kind of sucks. I, it took me a long time after first meeting Trev to really understand um, why my son was the way he was. That was a big part of my depression. Uh, before I started getting into spirituality, which opened up my channeling, uh, part of my drug addiction after I got in a car crash, um, I was put on pain meds and that slid way out of control. So after that, uh, that pain was always there and it was one of the most relevant things. Coming to accept that he chose to incarnate on earth and had a reason for doing that in his body the way it is. Um, so after that, you know, knowing that I could connect to Trev and Trev can connect to all these different energies, I asked him to try to work with him, communicate, and he said in this incarnation he cut off most of the energy from the higher self. You know, his whole purpose in being on earth was to experience that in a very limited body with limited communication and only exploring the emotional energies, not the physical or communication energies. So, wow. And, he has reached out to my fiance Kalina in dream state. Uh, there's been a couple people who've had him communicate with him in dream state. When I asked Treb and Ardiff about that, they say that that was a legitimate communication. So that's about the only time he's ever communicated. And usually when he does, he shows up in a very healthy body, able to verbally communicate and stuff, which is uh, really weird for people who know him real well and have only seen him in the form he's at now. So. Wow. So, so how is that for you in terms of like life lesson? Is that, is that, I mean, I imagine that's something you've given quite a bit of thought to. Oh yeah, that's, that's been the whole turning point and the whole purpose in that part of my life, just understanding the dynamic between him and myself, uh, him and his mother, uh, his mother and myself and me and Kalina and all the close people who've been a part of his life uh, very strongly that it, it's just everything's within that I, I wouldn't have been on my journey if it wouldn't have been his mother wouldn't have what she's going through now if it wasn't for that uh, my fiance Kalina has had tremendous changes by being a part of his life um, as does his mother's husband and it's been basically I consider him the hugest conduit in my life for change, and most everyone whose life he touches, he changed that drastically, whether it's emotionally, mentally, or something wrapped around their belief system. So it's huge. Catalytic. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And this, you know, it seems to be, there's a lot of that going on. Cat <laughs> catalysts, right? I mean, it seems like there's a lot of that going on from all different quarters and different different places that you wouldn't normally expect such a thing, you know? I mean, um, or maybe I'm just noticing it more. Maybe it's always been that way, but it just seems like I'm, it seems like we're in the time and that there seems to be like the era of catalysts or something like that. I mean, Trump's even a good example, you know? He's, he's got people fired up about all kinds of bizarre things and um, stuff they don't want to look at and, and probably a lot of other stuff that, we, that we're still yet to discover. I mean, for me, it's been the whole secret space program insider, the whistleblower, the people, the young people and otherwise that are coming out and saying, wow, I'm getting my memories back. You know, this happened, this happened, this happened. And it's forcing people to kind of think outside of the box a little bit. Absolutely. It's, it's something that 
I've noticed, and, and you're right, it's always happened to one degree or another, but right now it's just like so much more than it's ever been. I notice relationships with people, good and bad, have been catalysts for them finding parts of themselves. Uh, the news, the government, all that stuff has been so huge. And Ardiff and, and Treb just recently talked about how this part of the energy, uh, 2016, 2017, were huge for people being forced to look at their beliefs and forced to look at the parts of themselves that they can either accept or not accept. And by doing that, it really tells us who we are. And that's what I think has been the, the popping off of all that stuff. Ardiff actually said recently that in the second week of October, I think energies are going to start smoothening out. So uh, I've noticed it's been like nine months, not just in my life, but everybody I've known has been like a crazy farm with everybody. <laughs> Their lives have been getting thrown in the air and kicked around. And <laughs> uh, Ardiff said for most of us, it's going to start calming down in October, uh, mid-October. So I'm, oh. I'm waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. I'm going to mark uh, – that's like – I'm not going to forget that. I'm going to remember that. That's cool. Um, did, yeah. did he say anything about the eclipse in August? No, no, I, I haven't even. Uh, I didn't even know there was eclipse, so I haven't thought to talk to him. And no one else has asked the question that I'm aware of yet. Of yeah. course, a lot of the sessions I don't know what's going on there, so I have to listen back to it anyway. And with how busy it's been, I don't listen to many people's anymore. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it you could know, have been I, asked. It's on my mind because they're going to have a, a popular event uh, up in Shasta that I attended. Well, I, I attended a version of the previous one in 2016 up in Mount Shasta, which is in Northern California, not too far away. And uh, it's going to be during that uh, uh, solar eclipse. And the last time there was a solar eclipse, uh, like the one that we're going to experience on August 21st, was 1257 in the in the continent of the United States, or what it, you know what it, what we know as the United States back then. Of course, it wasn't the United States, but and what I'm talking about is a full occ occultation of the sun by the moon um, being visible from start to finish within the United States. So it starts up in Oregon. It traverses all the way through the country and finishes in, I think, Char Charleston, South Carolina. And oh, so if man. You're, if you're in this band, about a 100-mile uh, wide band across the United States, you can look up on August 21st and see the sun go entirely dark because the moon's <sighs> going to block it entirely. So the last time this happened, and it, like this, was 1257. And then the last time it happened in Canada in the United States, I think it was it was ni 1918, something like that. So it's relatively unusual. So I, my interview yesterday was with an astrologer talking about this. And uh, so I'm still editing the, the video, but, but I'm curious because it's supposed, from an astrological perspective, it's supposed to be quite an event. So it might be something that, that you might find interesting talking to... Um, to, to Reb or Artif about, you know, if you, you know, if you're inclined. Um, yeah, it's something that's highly interesting to me, and it's something that I have learned. You know, I used to take astrology and just take it or leave it. It didn't mean much to me, but to understand the nature of our relationship with uh, terrestrial bodies, but even more than that, to understand the nature of the bodies themselves, the moon itself, uh, the other planets, the stars all of those are consciousnesses on their own. So when they're interacting with us in the way like that eclipse, it's actually a very profound co-creation with that collective conscious energy with our collective. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing. I know it'll be powerful. I'm definitely going to find uh, more information <laughs> on that from Arnif. That's cool. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, I'll look forward to that. That'd be, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what he has to say about that. Um, Absolutely. Do, do the beings express themselves a male, male or female? Uh, yes and no. I mean, uh, like Treb, he doesn't have any reproductive organs, but he considers himself a masculine energy, therefore he's a male. Mm -hmm. uh, they have females on their planet too, which are uh, like his counterpart is uh, Sun Boryitni, which is uh, Treb Boryitni's counterpart. So it's like a husband and wife, but not really. Uh, that's just the term they give us so we can try to understand it. Uh, they share genetic DNA to create offspring and children. So they don't have reproductive organs, but they do it genetically, uh, engineering an actual physical life so a soul can enter. Um, 
with Ardiff, it's very interesting. I don't know much about the reproduction of his race or reproductivity because he barely talks about his own experience. He talks about uh, the things in his experience that are useful to us, but it's never really been, you know, I don't know, like with Treb, I've got very intimate relationship with him when I'm channeling, I'm astral projecting, so I'm able to hang out with him. I get to see his planet. I get to see him. Wherever he's at, I'm with him. But with Ardiff, I experience him a lot differently. When I'm with Treb, uh, Ardiff is kind of like uh, his relationship with Treb is like Treb is with mine. So Ardiff's like Treb's guide. So I don't get to experience Ardiff as intimately. I only get to experience him like right now when we're sitting here. I can feel his energy. I can uh, communicate with him sometimes in, a, in an awakened state mm -hmm. or in a conscious state. But I haven't had that intimacy level with Ardiff as I have with Treb and being able to see that. So I don't know much about artists reproductive. I do know that they do reproduce and they do have masculine and feminine forms. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know how it's done sexually or not. But uh, it's definitely something. I learn something new about Ardiff almost every time I connect with his energy that way yeah. in an inquisitive mind state. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so you and and then we in one of our previous exchanges you were talking about how you have to be you have to kind of plan ahead because it's kind of energetically taxing on you. You can't just pop up and go, "Oh, I'm going to do this now." You have to you have to kind of plan ahead. You know, if you're going to go grocery shopping or do something with your son or or whatever, you, it's not uh, it's not just something you you can do casually. Is that is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've got to go deep to get there. Um, people like my friend Nora Harold, uh, she's very there. She's she could channel all day if she wanted to because she's conscious and she's right there, and it doesn't energetically tax her in that same way. For me, the honest reason uh, that Trev has talked about art, if the reason it taxes me as much as it does, is because of my own health. I'm overweight. Uh, I I don't always have the best diet or exercise routine. I notice that when I lose weight and I feel better physically, then I'm less tired when I'm done with the channeling. But even if I'm at 100% health, I still have to plan ahead because I have to go so deep, mm -hmm. which means I have to prepare myself for like uh, almost five to ten minutes before I start the session. And then I still have to breathe and connect in the oming process to connect with them for about three minutes itself. So there's at least ten minutes of preparation time. Then afterwards... Uh, I'm not always together mentally. I mean, I can communicate and I can talk, but uh, I, I feel like I'm not grounded, almost like you are when you've been in an airplane uh, for a long time and you feel just kind of lightheaded or, or you just feel a little ungrounded. That's the way I feel yeah. when I come back. Yeah, you're not going to go jump in the car and go take the test at the DMV or something, you know, right? Yeah. No, yeah, it, not for go... a couple hours at least. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I get it. It's it's fascinating because I, I in my with my YouTube channel I have been able to meet a variety of different channelers and it's so different for each person. It's not it's in fact it's even a little bit difficult to just to categorize, to just to go basic, you know, like categories of channelers because for each channeler it's very it's, it can be a very different experience. Yeah, I, I've tried to uh, categorize that. I've, I've made three basic categories, but you're right. Everyone's so different. Uh, I was trying to describe this to a person who was asking me about it a few months ago, um, someone who was getting a session. Before the session, I always give them time to ask questions if they're curious about something. And he was talking about that, and I said, well, you know, there's the deep trance like I am, then the semi-trance, uh, which is kind of like Daryl Anka, and then there's the um, completely lucid and aware uh, conscious channeling like Nora Harold, and then even like Wendy Kennedy, you know, she can be a conscious and there, but she still goes in deeper, so she's still bordering on a line of of energy there. So it is. It's it's. I've never met one channeler who's had any sort of similar connection processes experience or channeling energy that the next one has and i know now since i've been working with so many other channelers me and kalina know dozens of different channelers so yeah. it's weird it's so unique yeah, yeah it is one of the ones that um that i discovered kind of early on i never did an interview with him but i read some of his books and saw my video was paul selig and um what did he say oh the book uh book he wrote a book it's called book love creation book 
uh, knowing worth. And when he when he does his uh, channeling, he said everything comes out twice. So he'll say a sentence, and he's got like a rocking motion thing, and then he's, he's I think he ends up saying everything twice. And it's fascinating, you know, uh, to watch. It's a little disconcerting at first because you're like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> but, but uh, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, it's been fascinating. I've, I've been working with a, a channel, a channeler from Chicago area named Carl Mollison. We've done a series of channels where we, where he channels uh, uh, humans who have successfully transitioned after their passing, and they're now known as light beings, and they're communicating about. Uh, their roles in the cover-up of the whole UFO space program, uh, whatever, you know, alien contact with the government, that kind of thing. So we've had an opportunity to uh, channel numbers of people, uh, Eisenhower, uh, James Forrestal, etc. And it's been a fascinating experience for me, very educational. And uh, it's really helped me to kind of hone my skills in terms of my research and what and what I'm looking at, you know, these days. So, That's amazing. Yeah, I, I've had I've had a. It's been really interesting the whole channeling aspect because it's very it's very controversial. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, researchers that won't consider any any channel material whatsoever, and uh, so I, I feel I feel like for me it's I'm kind of at the infant stages of discovery around all this, you know. And, well, uh, sure. Yeah, it's it's amazing when you said that though that this guy channels these beings who uh, successfully transition. It's so weird to see the different vibrations of the the channelers too and what they bring in. I myself have only channeled two or three uh, humans who have passed on before, and one of them was actually kind of in between the stages of reincarnating, and another one was completely out of the incarnation cycle. They'd finished it. Um, so those one or two differences, but that was kind of my intent when I started meditating was to connect to humans who had passed on. Mm -hmm. So it's weird to see, uh, you know, we've got people who channel ETs, archangels, and all these different energies. It's nice to see someone who's working from that perspective because I've not heard of, of anyone doing that on a regular basis. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and he, he's actually extended his practice into, uh, I mean, he, he started out as a, uh, Mostly just helping people one on one. You know, he wasn't uh, really a public fi figure. Um, that's only happened recently for him. But um, um, one of the things that he's that he's gone on to to discover that he can do. I don't know how much of it he's actually done, but helped people uh, well, whose parents have dementia or Alzheimer's and they've lost connection, being able to communicate with them. So he's stepped in and provided a, a means of communication with loved ones who've lost the ability to, to communicate with their children or whatever like that. And uh, I think up to and including aut aut autism and things like that. So um, I, I don't know amazing. any details about that. I, I think he's probably done it a few times. I think it was a pretty much a recent discovery for him that he could extend those skills into those areas too with people still living. And uh, so yeah, I, I'm just having a blast being on the on the periphery and the, you know being involved so I could kind of you know, see it from a distance or, you know, I'm not intimately involved with it, but, but just hearing, uh, his different discoveries around all this stuff and mostly just, just helping people, you know, um, I mean, there's so, so many, uh, modalities that can be of great assistance to people that aren't, that aren't, um, um, like ex accepted in the normal, you know, like, like you talk to spirits or whatever. Well, I mean, maybe not so much now, but like back in the fifties, they'd put you in a home. You'd yeah. be committed. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, even now, I mean, even now, there's still a pretty, a pretty big stigma on there. Um, yeah. When I, when I was going to court for my son, that was the number one thing everyone I wanted to bring up. You know, oh. well, this guy thinks he can talk to aliens. He's probably not mentally sane. So during oh the divorce gosh. process, they send me to a psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever they are, a counselor. And I go in there and I talk to him and I explain. And he's like, hmm, that makes sense. Okay. Well, you know, you're touching parts of your your uh, subconscious or unconscious self. I don't think that's unhealthy. And he gave me flying colors. So I walked through and that wasn't mentioned anymore. But it was, I mean, people that, were on fire about it initially. Were you surprised at that reaction? 
at the counselor's reaction, yes, because the other reaction, this guy's nuts. I've gotten that since I've started sharing the channeling publicly, so I'm used to that. That's normal for me to yeah. get that type of reaction. But to see the counselor, I actually, and this is a story I've only told once before to people, but when I first met Trav, Mm -hmm. it, it was like totally uh, not trying to happen, just out of the blue, and so vivid and so strong of a thing. I quit channeling for like, or I quit meditating for like three or four days. I actually was so disturbed at what happened, I went to the emergency room and oh. said, I need to know if I'm going crazy. <laughs> wow. I talked to the doctor, yeah. and the doctor said, when you're dealing with meditation, especially when you're dealing with those uh, brainwave binarial things, things like this could happen. You seem lucid. You seem good. I don't think it's an issue. You don't seem crazy to me. By luck, I got that doctor. It could have went the other way. Uh, where, where they had me in a padded wagon, but it affected me so strongly. I, I went to this person. So that was the second time a health professional said, I think you're okay. <laughs> you know? Well, you know that From what is, I can see. That's really good news to hear a story like that. I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I've heard other people who've had bad experiences with the doctors when it comes to channeling or talking to spirits or seeing spirits. So it was good. <laughs> wow. So did that? Did that? Did those experiences kind of bolster your confidence to continue on? Because it wasn't like you didn't get your hand slapped. You know, it was kind of like a green light. Yeah, absolutely. That freedom that I felt from the first initial talk with that, uh, that gave me a great deal of confidence to say, you know what, let's try it again. And after that, you know, the last three or four times after that, uh, I learned enough from what Trev was telling me to start looking into other stuff and I saw synchronicities fall. So that let me go full time into connecting with Trev. Like I connected with Trev in meditation for two years before I ever channeled him. So that was important to me just to keep connecting with him. By the time court had happened during the divorce, that I was already past all that. I knew it was going to be an issue. So it didn't, it, it made me happy that they could see it. So I didn't uh, possibly lose my son uh, because, you know, my son being the most important thing in the world, along with this work and my relationship with my fiance, those are the three things that are always the most important. But I, at that point, I already knew no matter what, I was okay to go keep doing this. Uh, so for the first one, it was really important. Second one, not as much. So in your work, uh, Rob, do you help other people that were, that were going, that are going through the same kinds of things that you had to go through with all the family relationships and stuff like that? Because I, I could see that someone like you could be immensely helpful to someone who's, who's, has a similar experience, like having to deal with health professionals or family relationships and also having these contacts with um, beings from different dimensions, what have you, however you want to look at it. So, Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's um, For me, I probably do, out of all the times I, I do any of uh, the work that I'm doing, 20% of it is me communicating with a person one-on-one. -on -one. The 80% is channeled, but even in the channeled state, especially Trev, because he has been with me for so long and we've connected so deeply. Uh, I can feel his energy, emotion, thought process, just like he can mine. So he's able to dig through all of my experiences, use that, and, and form from his higher perspective, or I call it a higher perspective, be able to formulate energies and ideas to people uh, that can be useful for those situations. But on the 20% where I'm dealing one-on-one -on -one with everybody, um, I've helped a lot of people get through issues that were very similar. Uh, the drug addiction issue is a huge thing. Um, depression is another thing. And relationships. And uh, even a few people who've contacted me about special needs children. They knew I've been a father uh, you know, now for over 18 years. So uh, I've had I've had practice with it, and it does. It, it helps people. Uh, the channeling helps people in one way, but but that helps in another way. And I'm just glad that Treb has that ability to dig through my experiences so deeply and use those as a part of his explanation. And that's one thing I've always told Treb: use my life as examples. If you need to, when you're talking to someone, even if it's embarrassing or bad, use it. Because that could be the difference. And he does. He does. He calls me out a lot. <laughs> yeah. 
No, but it's it's such a it's such a powerful way to connect with people because then they know that they're, you know, they they've got a, a kindred spirit. You know, like you're not you're not someone that that needs to be put on a pedestal or something like that. You're human. You've got problems like everyone else. And then people have a a basis of identification where they don't feel threatened or less than. And uh, you know, once those kind of doors get opened up, wonderful things can happen. You know, yeah, it's a I, very healing experience. Yeah, I, I I totally agree. It's it's funny that there are uh, so many people who have that when they initially uh, look into channeling or feel, you know, they're like, wow, these people are able to channel. That means they're so blessed and so spiritual and so awakened. And I'm like, man, if you could live a year of my life, you would see <laughs> that even when I'm channeling, my life is not easy. It's not great. I, I'm just like every other human, I hear these beautiful lessons and I forget to use them <laughs> when I'm getting my ass kicked all the way through life. Um, you know, but once people see that, that I'm human, I mean, most people with me, it's easy. I wear uh, some of that emotional energy inside on the outside. I'm overweight. Uh, part of that is genetics, but part of it is my own eating. And I use that eating sometimes when I'm going through emotional difficulty. Like when my dad died, uh, I gained 40 pounds back that I had lost from before. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was excited and doing lots of events, I lost a lot of weight. I was doing stuff. So, you know, that energy there shows people I'm human. But even people who don't see that part of it, they say, oh, you know, uh, you and Kalina just put out a video and you were talking about having a difficult time. I didn't know that happened. I'm like, every human, no matter how spiritual or how connected they are, gets their ass kicked every day by their life, their thoughts, their, their forming of reality in one way or another. Um, and th the thing that frustrates me a lot is the reason that happens is because the old paradigm of spiritual teachers tried to create that version of themselves. I'm perfect. I don't do anything wrong. I don't sin. I do God's work. I do Allah's work. I do all this. So I'm perfect, and that's what you should strive to be. And then they get caught uh, stealing or molesting children or doing something crazy. So the, that persona that they put out front that is so fake is so harmful because it doesn't allow people to see that everyone is able to have a spiritual happy existence. I I might not have happy life um, in that perfect sense that all spiritual teachers should have, but I tell you, from my life 10 years ago, 15 years ago till now, it is 100 million times better. On average, I am happier more than I'm not. <laughs> and yeah. that right there is a testament. Uh, but... Everyone can channel. Everyone can connect consciousness. Everyone can do it. It's not exclusive uh, just to uh, people named Rob who live in Michigan. Everyone gets that. And that's what one thing I really tried to try to explain to people because it's so sad to see people not honoring themselves and not giving themselves that credit that everybody deserves. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a real good point. Yeah, because a lot of people are kind of like... Um coming out of the whole religious paradigms but then you know uh, I noticed in some of the work I've been doing that some of it's popping back up and, and one of that it one of those issues is kind of something that you touched on it's just being uh, giving yourself the permission to connect back with good spiritual elements in your life you know like it doesn't need to be uh, it doesn't need to be woo woo or something that's connected to a religion so to speak you know it could just be through your own means, you know. Um, but, you know, disassociating yourself from all the stigma of it and just making it a personal relationship. You don't need to have any more baggage on it than that, really. Yeah, you know? I, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's amazing to see the difference in uh, my life when I was worried about how other people perceived it and not. And knowing that it was just that, my relationship with Treb, my relationship to myself, and my relationship to those people I communicate with, when you simplify it like that, it becomes a whole lot easier. <laughs> exactly. So do you have any events coming up? Yeah, actually, uh, this weekend on the 15th, uh, I'm going to be in uh, July 15th, I'm going to be in Detroit. Um, 
uh, Michelle Walling from the... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, she's going to be doing an event, the N5D Radio, for her um, for her uh, Cosmic Awakening online event. Uh, that'll be in Detroit. October, we're going to do our annual uh, Asheville three-day workshop, and that is going to be October 7th, 8th, and 9th in downtown Asheville, North Carolina. Oh, wow, uh, cool. Is, yeah, Spiritual Vortex, anyone who's never been there, whether you go there uh, for an event or just for vacation, it is one of the most spiritual energies I've ever felt just being in a place. It's a whole mountain that's built with uh, quartz crystals throughout the whole mountain. It's it's one of the biggest uh, whole crystals in the whole world, or at least North America. So it's huge spiritual energy, and we do. How, that's far, why out we how, feel, how far out of Asheville is that? Uh, from my, for, we always mm-hmm. drive down because Kalina has family uh, about an hour and a half outside of Asheville and uh, family in Asheville. So we uh, drive for usually about twelve hours to get there. It's twelve hours, uh, and that's w- with a stopping and right, uh, right. taking in the site stuff. But yeah, it's about a ten-hour drive, twelve-hour drive. So I mean, no, how far is that mountain out of Asheville? Um, oh, the mountain yeah. is Asheville's on top of it. Uh, that mountain that's there. Um, Asheville's right there in the mountains, so oh. that whole city sits on on that range, and that range has huge quartz crystals in the mountain itself. That see, the town sits on two different mountain peaks. One side of town's on one side, the other's on the other. Okay. Uh, so the one part of town uh, and the other are still sitting on the same range. And I'm not sure exactly what what to call it. I don't I'm not familiar with the mountain terminology. Okay. But basically both of the parts of the same mountain are there. So Okay, and that's in October. Yeah, October and then December uh, we're gonna be doing Los Angeles Channel Panel again, which is a collection of amazing channelers. We ha- we don't have a venue yet, we don't have a specific date, but we're thinking it's probably gonna be December first, second, and third, or twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, mm-hmm. uh, and we're going to do that in Los Angeles. Last time we were in Los Angeles, two thousand fifteen, was amazing. We had uh, eight channelers. We're gonna try to get ten, uh, but really big big energy there mm-hmm. that was one of the most powerful events of my life and it wasn't because of it being a big event it was because all the people who came there were super excited all the channelers were bringing their entities energies in and their excitement it just it was explosive it was one of the greatest things we've got that on youtube live for everybody too to watch the 2015 oh cool yeah, right. it's eight hours of channeling. So put your wow. put your uh, popcorn in the microwave. <laughs> and, you know, sit down for a while. But it's great. Wow, amazing! Wow. So, did, are you also a writer? Do you do, do you have any book projects or anything like that going on? Oh, right now I I've been trying to write a book since uh, <laughs> I think late 2015. Once my dad uh, passed away, in um, it was uh, October. Um, of 2016 no geez that was uh, 2015 god once that happened that was right after our channel panel the one I was just talking about that was so good and explosive that shut me down for a little bit and once we started back up I just didn't get back into the writing but this project I did with McGill uh, Mendoza is what's reinvigorating me so i'm going to be starting back on that book it's with art if and it's done in a different way usually i just channel and transcribe yes but with this book i'm doing a conscious channeling version so i'm bringing the energy in from like the downloads that i receive and when i do that then i'm going to have art if go through it and tweak whatever you know, because when I'm getting it, I'm just doing it as my head. You know, there's no real form to it. Mm-hmm. And then he goes through the second time, gives it form, and then the third time, and exacts. Right now, I have uh, a chapter and a half, two chapters written. Mm-hmm. I learned more in reading that two chapters about what's going on uh, with the entire galactic consciousness than I've learned in the two years before that uh, with him in the channeling state. It's very in depth, very specific information. And um, uh, right now, the working title is going to be Galactic History, an Ancient Pleiadian Perspective. Um, even though artists from Deneb, uh, he's Denebian, a lot of people call them the ancient um, 
uh, the ancient Pleiadians because that's where their race came from to the DNIP system to settle. So it's wow. going to be interesting. Yeah. Wow. So do you, do you have yourself on a schedule for that, or are you just going to tackle it as, as, as you can? Right now, because we're just getting back into that swing after court, we've we've spent two months just trying to catch up on people wanting sessions at first, because yeah. that's where most of the income comes in, and that's where most of our one-on-one help for others come in. So now, uh, after we get back from this Detroit trip, we're going to be on full blast. We, we just started up a Patreon thing before um, last month, and that's one of that working ways to give us more time to put one day per week on the schedule so we don't have to create income that day and we can sit down and do something like yeah. a book. Clean is working with her guides, too, and I'm sure they'll have a book up in the next year or two. It is, so. a, lo- it is a lot of work. Yeah, book and I'm horrible. Yeah, and it yeah it takes a lot of discipline, and uh, I haven't done too much of it. But what I have, what, but I've I've had enough experience to know that it's, it takes a lot of concentration, plan, planning. You have to sit down, you know, not be disturbed or distracted, and and then yeah, to actually produce something in the end, you know, because there's the editing and uh, yeah, I. I, so I have a lot of respect for people who commit themselves to writing a book, especially now because it's not like the old days. You could write a book and actually make a little money on it. Like most most writers now don't make much money unless you're just like, you know, crazy successful and get movie deals and that kind of thing. You know? Yeah. So yeah. It's usually a labor of love. It is. Uh, and that's this book that Miguel did recently, uh, Being with the Beings, where I did a chapter with him on that. I respect this guy so much. He he's one of the people who I meet for the first time and I instantly just connect with him. And we've been talking and this was the third book in a matter of uh less than a year that he's there, fourth, maybe even fifth book, I can't remember exactly. And this he, guy is so amazing. Yeah, and he I, does he does all this transcription manually. I mean he, Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. I know he works. <laughs> He works his ass off, and, and I, I, I try to do that, but I suck at English. I suck at writing. I suck at sentence structures. So transcribing would be easier, and that's why I think another reason this takes a little longer because the transcribing uh, isn't on the table anymore, so it makes it a little rougher too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Miguel's impressive, and, and he, he's. Uh... He's a kick to, to do interviews with too. I, I I did a couple interviews with him. I did one with Krista Raisa, and then I did one with him with, with the, uh, for the first two books that he wrote. Uh, we are the Disclosure Parts One and Parts Two, and uh, but I, I yeah I love him. I can ask him one question and I can just hang up. You know, I just like <laughs> he'll go. You know, he's got he has a lot to say and there's a lot of enthusiasm. And uh, the the only thing that he that we struggle with is the time difference. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. we could fill hours up. You know. Yeah. He's a he's an amazing guy, and and I know what you mean too. He's also really funny. Uh, yeah. I did one of the interviews with him um, just last month, where we were both doing the interview, uh, and that was an amazing time I had with him. And he he's a funny guy, very sincere too. Uh, Krista, I saw the interview you did with him, and Krista, oh, yeah. Krista's a great friend of Kalina and mine too. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Amazing person. Is she going to be in L.A.? Uh, I'm hoping. I'm hoping she will be, yes. Uh, we're, we're getting all the people settled up now. Um, we're, we're doing a two-layer thing. We've got people who we're going to, as soon as we set the venue, we're going to send out invites, and she'll be on that top list. Okay, cool. You know, I, 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 I have a feeling that she'd, re- <laughs> that she'd really like Asheville, too. I bet you she would just love Asheville. Oh yeah, we're we're gonna try to do a channel panel in Asheville too. Right now, we're just doing the workshops, which is just me and Kalina. Uh-huh. Uh, but next year, we want to do that. And Krista, actually, she was a part of our uh, online channel panel we did last year too. Okay. Uh, her and her fiance Ross, so they were did amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, yeah she's a lot of fun. <laughs> she is. Yeah. Um. Well, gosh, this is wonderful. I'm so glad we did this. Is there anything? Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Like, like get a, get a message out or? 
I, you know, the one thing I, I've been trying to share with people uh, more lately than than ever is just the relaxation part about things, and we we talked a little bit about that. But life uh, right now is confusing for a lot of us, and it, it's kind of crazy for a lot of us. Just the breathing and knowing that no matter what comes in and out of your life right now, it's a part of a better reason. And I know it's hard to just accept that and believe it, but if if you can accept a part of that you're going to find your emotions uh, not coming in so intensely and even if they do that's not a bad thing either the emotional energy is very important uh, to, to let come through you instead of trying to block it off or hide it away I just I want people to be able to know that it's okay to relax now and that uh, things don't stay hard forever because that's really been the biggest issue from almost everyone that Kalina and I hear from or hear about lately. Mm -hmm. uh, and just know that maybe I don't know you, maybe you don't believe that I love you, but you are loved by by the universe, by uh, other people that you don't even know. You're loved all the way around, and that's why Ardiff makes such a big deal when he says that to people. Um, Ardiff sounds like he's a rough around the corners, very stiff voice, but he does have a huge amount of love. And when he says you are loved, he just means that you're loved. You know, being a part of this universe means you're a part of that love energy, and that's what it takes to be able to really open yourself up and and let yourself go is accepting the fact that you're loved, whether it's by the people you want to love you or not. It, it doesn't matter right now. Just knowing your love might be helpful. So. I, I think that's very important, and I, I, I too have had an amazing time too today. And this, I like this way of communicating. You know, <laughs> feeling free to just talk and and relax and enjoy. It's very, very fun for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, our timing's probably good because you're done with the court thing now, and you can take your own advice and relax a little bit. You know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's a good message for me because, um, I mean, I, I have a really busy schedule. With the, I'm trying to I'm trying to book in a lot of interviews right now because I'm going to be going away for a little while with my wife. You know, where I'm not going to be doing interviews probably for a week or more, and so I'm trying to I'm trying to stuff ten pounds of shit in a five pound bag right now, <laughs> and does it is stressing me out a little bit, and. Uh, so, yeah, so this has been kind of therapeutic for me, too. So thank you, Rob. I appreciate it. Absolutely, and thank you so much. And enjoy your, your trip when you go. Okay. Uh, you and your wife, enjoy that. Okay, thanks, Rob. And thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll have link, links down below, and uh, and maybe Rob and I will pick pick up the story again, maybe after the uh, the eclipse or something. You know, maybe he'll find out something special from... Uh, from his contacts about the eclipse and uh, and we can look forward to right around the second week of October for some more relaxation <laughs> okay. well needed <laughs> okay thanks everybody bye bye <laughs>